frailty service. I've also got an interest in medical education. I'm sort of training program director for our higher trainees. And I've developed an interest in simulation over the years, which actually starts up in paediatrics, but it's sort of now grown that we sort of run lots of simulations in situ in the actual emergency departments as well as going to the sim lab occasionally. Uh, got the rest of the team here as well, who's our education team, so Jamie, okay. <laughs> and, and so forth. And also very kindly John's come from uh, Gurnars, which is a company that does very nice simulators, which we're hoping to get, because I was too embarrassed to bring the one we cut across. bits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so he'll take you through with the mannequin. I don't know what you want out of this session. There's two options. One is, I just run the simulation and we'll get you guys to the candidates. Or the option two is I'll improve how you can run an in-situ simulation in the department. The second option, sorry? Second option is I run through how you can sort of set up and practically run a simulation in, in the in the emergency department or on your ward, uh, in sort of in situ rather than in a in, in, in the lab laboratory kind of session. So I'll, I'll leave that for people. What any any great preferences around the room? I mean, to know how to get it set up. Yeah. Because I think from acute hospitals it would be useful, but actually yeah. have a go as well is nice. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we can do a bit of a mixture. I'll run you through how we, we sort of set ones up the program, and then we'll have a little. Play, I think it's fair to say after we begin tomorrow. Are people happier with that? Rather than people going, no, I don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay, this sort of set that up. Is it anybody runs simulations in their departments or as education programs? What, what sort of things do you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've missed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we used it for medical Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some. Basic things, cannulation. Yeah, okay. So very much the skills things and as well bringing it together. So the yeah. hardest thing is dealing with the empathy and the compassion. <laughs> yeah, talking, talking to a American, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. We've, done, we've done um, sepsis mm -hmm. training using SIM, but we've also done delirium, but we used a real person for the okay. delirium SIM session, yeah. which okay. got around the empathy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's quite, it was really informed yeah. in the department. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's quite powerful. There are some groups that, that do a real person and you're interacting with them, you talk to them because you can't get the feedback necessarily from this. But then when it comes to doing a procedure, you switch to a, a mannequin, almost have them almost side by side. Um, and we, we put together some resources that, that are going to go on the internet that you can have a flick through. But there's a particular podcast about a, a paediatric team that has set that up. They have real kids in there who give the paediatric voice and, and the power that that lends is, is quite... Um, and quite sometimes you can also, what we have done is set up, and mm -hmm. this, this mannequin will do it as well, you can have some movement on the screen, yeah. doing the voice over on that. I think the most realistic one I've had with that is a five-year-old, I've got to mention people as a five-year-old now <laughs> doing the voice <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any, Anything you're doing? A PLS on yeah. American. Yeah. Okay. So and ended training and yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We do do a bit of gorilla sim in uh, Imperial, but it's like it depends. The scenario is obviously different, but yeah. it's obviously very emergency, same as everyone else does. I yeah. Okay. Does everybody know what gorilla sim is? Yeah. Um, I think the term originates. Uh, one of the uh, ED guys uh, in, in, Man in Manchester, Simon Garley of Properties, and coined gorilla simulation. Um, and I think there's a mixture between simulation, what he's doing sort of the life support course, he's ever doing more high fidelity in the simulation suites. Then you've got in situ sim, and a little bit after that is gorilla simulation, which is similar to in situ, but occasionally you'll just pull it, the emergency buzzer on the wall without telling people you're doing what. We tend to do a bit of mixture between in situ and the rural occasion in our department. Yes. <laughs> well, but again, we did that. We did that on our frailty yeah. unit. The yes. last gorillas and we ran, we went onto the frailty unit and we put out a crash call. And I believe it was a matron who turned up and we saw the mannequin and just went, oh. <laughs> um, but then they threw themselves in and the scenario ran. Yeah. You know, and we got very, very senior people who came and responded and tested the system. 
All right. Um, just sort of run through what what I find useful simulation wise. One is obviously your your standard life support groups. Those are well established, I think, in most countries, and I think that gives us a sort of standard sort of level to, to get through them. What we tend to do in the department is a mixture of some like laboratory simulation in the region. Um, Sarah was with me last week when I was doing a simulation day as part of our training program for our regis, which is a very standard scenario, so <coughs> lots of talking points. And we also do that in the department as well. But what we, we tend to have done, and we're doing it now sort of at least weekly, is we basically in the department, or in that little ward behind the department, we've got the frailty unit, we tend to set up our mannequin. Unfortunately, this is not the mannequin we've got. I don't know if anybody else has got access to mannequins. We've got probably a 10, 20 year old, below 3G sim man label um, mannequin. But you don't always need a lot of kit to get going with simulation. Uh, you know, for instance, you can take, set one up in your ward and, and just take something to an empty bed. I'll just give them a scenario of demented person. <coughs> If you do that, just see the response of people of how you deal with the confused elderly person who wanders off the ward is actually quite powerful. And you, you learn a lot of people don't know actually what do I do in that situation. <laughs> so kit is never go and scratch around, look what's around. Uh, resource facilitators, clinical skills people are great in our hospital and the kids side we've already done once a week to do a show. People haven't got kit. I'm still finding out little bits of kit hanging around the neighbourhood that we do pick up and steal the commission. Okay. Having said that, do you want to see a nice, high fidelity, really nice mannequin? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Let you show. Do you want to have anything done there? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. sure. Hello. Um, I'm John from Goldmark uh, in the UK. Anybody familiar with Goldmark? Anybody know about Goldmark? No? Okay, that's fine. You will soon. Um, <laughs> get uh, right, the, the, the simulator that we've got here, obviously you've got the difference between ALS and simulation. Okay, so most simulators will come with the ALS capabilities. So this guy's got all of that. But I'll run down from head to toe and we'll, you'll, you'll pick up on other bits of simulation rather than resuscitation that this guy can do. Yeah. Do you um, want to come a bit closer so to the field? As, as you may be getting up there, or you may have been watching him, and you may have seen his eyes open and close, or if you've not been watching, you may have just seen his eyes closed. He's actually switched off and he goes to open his eyes. Okay, so this isn't a blink that he's got, so he can, he can blink 5, 10, 20 times a minute, or you can have what we've got going on now, which is spontaneous opening. So that creates or simulates a kind of a drowsy effect. Yeah, something not quite right. Yes. Nasally intubatable, orally intubatable. Uh, we make for a difficult airway with tongue edema, pharyngeal swelling, laryngeal spasm. Um, cyanosis, so we can have that at various degrees, so slight cyanosis or full on, so very obvious. Coming down, we have this little block here, what that little block is, uh, you may have seen that on so basic simulation or basic resource equipment, and that is an airway, so we can take out this airway and put in uh, a Crico airway, all right, so you can practice tracking. Moving down, oh, well, I'll do this. You might like this. He sits up. <laughs> okay. If we're sitting down, now, just need to show that bit up. It's a very simple thing, but you can see, people see that he can sit up very effectively. Okay, we're down to his chest. You see his chest is moving. We can simulate a pneumothorax, so we can close one of his lungs off. And in the sides here, he has chest drain sites. So you wouldn't go in with a needle because that wouldn't do him a lot of good. Okay, you go in to a pre-sighted uh, hole, basically, and pass the tube in, so it's simulated. All the discs here, the golden discs, this is a real 12 lead ECG, and is defib for 
Okay, for evaluation. It's the other one there. Okay, so that you're going to use real pads, real equipment. Moving down his left arm. Oh, sorry, no, we'll just stay here while he's breathing. We've got different breath sounds as well. All right, and we've got sounds uh, anterior and posterior. Heart sounds, all different library. We've got a different library or a full library of um, sinus rhythms as well. So when we put him into a certain sinus rhythm, it's not just the sinus rhythm that changes, everything changes. So if we put him to his pace systole, he's gonna stop breathing, he'll close his eyes. Okay, so everything goes according to the, the uh, rhythm that he's in. So coming down this arm here, he has brachial pulses, radial pulses, the same in his right arm. The right arm, and in both arms as well, we can have IV. Okay, so you can give bolus, you can take simulated blood if it's been filled as such, um, or we can give uh, an IV infusion. The right arm on this model is a drug recognition arm. Not something that I think you're gonna to use today, so don't worry too much. But what that would uh, do is you pre-program syringes so that he knows what each syringe is. You come along to give the drug, he knows what the drug is, and when you inject it, he knows how much volume of that particular drug he's had and will respond automatically. If you give him an overdose, he will respond automatically according to the overdose, okay? Very clever. Um, bowel sounds, you can listen in there. This little thing here, this is, we're not gonna use that today, um, but it's for two-way speech. That would, for the people that are around discussing the condition, what we're gonna do, making the plans, we're picking that up through here. That would also be having a two-way conversation with him. So if I was to say, how do you feel? The facilitator would hear that in their headset and they would answer by the microphone and that come out of his head as though he's replying to you. So you're in a two-way conversation with him. All right, mention the pulses. He has oxygen saturation, okay? So that would be a real oxygen saturation monitor, real non-invasive blood pressure. So you put your Dynamap on him, pop the thing on his finger and it will come up on your monitor. Not on this monitor, well, it will come up on that monitor, but this is on the virtual. This is what I'm telling this to say. Your real monitor will pick up and all that. And coming down, so yeah, the uh, this particular model, this is the only model that will, will do it, he can actually be put onto a ventilator. Now all the range there that you see, the, the pediatrics, the birthing simulator, they can all go on a ventilator, the air will go in and out, it won't do anything really, okay? With this one, we can, he's got dynamic lung compliance, which means we can alter the state of his lungs to work with the ventilator, work against the ventilator, he'll trigger the vent, he'll hold his pee, okay? So whatever we do with him, with his lungs, the ventilator will then kick off. So then we adjust the ventilator settings to get the, the volume into it, yeah? So you get in, then get a training on him and basic use of a ventilator and what to look for. So this is when you're really getting into the simulation thing. Uh, I am catheterization and all over. And in there, this is only something that I noticed recently. This little chap has a cervix as well. <laughs> so you can be. You, you can put that in the geriatric simulation. Put <laughs> <laughs> that in somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. And then coming down to his legs, he has femoral pulses. Pedi, PD, pulses as well. So we'll find that just under the posterior and there. And, and under here, we have the introsis. Okay, so that can be drilled into and fluid extracted that you've previously put inside there. Underneath the introsis is just a little bit tricky to get out. And it's got a cartridge on it. Get hold of the finger. Okay. I'm not sure how old this one is. I'll keep that one. Um, CO2. So that's a CO2 canister, which takes the CO2 up 
and out of here so you can monitor the CO2, yeah. which you can control on the, the tablet. So I've got the tablet over there. You'll see it's not connected to anything. It's working. I could probably maybe go down there, whatever's down there. I can't remember. I could probably go outside down there and operate it, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, because I will be able to see what you do. But generally, the, the way that it happens, as you're probably aware, is a uh, camera system. Yeah. So wherever you are, you could be, be behind closed doors, you're watching the camera, seeing what's going on, you're making the changes yeah, to him in another room. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, this mannequin, this is the top notch one. I must say, as an ED, I wouldn't start trying to do teaching a simulation or ventilator. Settings, but if I was running one with my ITU yes. colleagues, they may be able to get that. Yeah, they but react yeah. small. They react and so forth. Uh, you know, you, a lot of all the different mannequins do it. If you're going to run a series of parts, you just think about scenarios you want to run. You, you can sort of think of that of what what you've seen with incidents, what you think's the learning, what's your competences in your curriculum, that sort of thing, uh, and get every get the whole MDT team involved. It doesn't work as well if you're trying to do a simulation, you've got the doctor playing the nurse or the doctor playing some, something else. Okay, the healthcare system doesn't work, so get those guys involved and somebody watching doing it. You do need to let people get aware of their kit yeah, um, and, and somebody to run through like that. Uh, and before you start it, run through what you expect out of it because everybody's first reaction when they do a simulation is, um, <laughs> let me out of here, all right. You know, make it clear at the beginning, you give a spill, it's not a test, it's safe learning. You can kill the mannequin, it's absolutely fine. The coroner will not speak to you afterwards if you on the stand. Um, but most people will it's serious here to learn and so forth. Uh, okay. Um, and then we'll sit down afterwards and discuss things. Okay. Um, simple bits, that doesn't come with the mannequin, that's ours. I've <laughs> got <a> selection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And also the kit. There's also some very simple things you can do, like a bit of red food colourant, works well in water. Uh, if you want to stuff it around, these guys do do various packages for trauma and stuff. Um, but you can sort of that. Okay. Does anyone have a little feel and play with that? And then we can run a quick scenario, I suspect. Yeah. Should we do a quick abbreviated? Can yeah. I just ask one? I mean, I maybe didn't turn the mannequin over, but do you do for like digital retroexamination? Uh, so that's one of the mm. biggest things within our hospital. I know from a nursing up. perspective, with the not very good. Certainly, our birth is simulated right now. He's got a landmark for, but. I must say, I've never. Sure. No. <laughs> I, I haven't seen simulator. I'm sure somebody makes a simulator that will simulate a PR and what a prostate yeah. feels like. And so I right. think you're good. Yeah. They are out there. Separate model. Um, yeah. 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 Examination trainer, mm -hmm. so it's on robotics, and they can program it so that when you put your finger inside, you can tell it what to feel, and the robot moves around and simulates the prostate as normal as abnormal. It don't, they've got a, another level, but there are simple trainers for how to do a digital mm -hmm. examination that are the university and skills like that here. Yeah, there's other things like sort of phlebotomy arms, uh, if you're looking very specifically at airway stuff, sort of trade, you can do that on him as well, but you know, how to maintain simple airways. Yeah, I mean, quite, quite often what we find though is you do the sim and you'll come into it with a, a preformed target, you'll think, oh, I'm really interested in, in major hemorrhage or whatever, I want to do the blood. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you put a group of people in a room and you watch how they interact and all the learning comes out of yeah. the people rather than the skill. So it's about thinking what you're using simulation for. Yeah. Um, but those, yeah, those models will exist. Yeah, no, those do work well. It, it is interesting that you've got the team dealing with things in that. And it, when you said the last stroke is about three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And that day I decided we are still going to do a simulation in the morning with one of the sisters, and we did, and we got the good, 
Jay. It was Jay. It was Jay. <laughs> I got Jay as the candidate in the sense and didn't tell him what we were going to throw him, but it, it was very interesting to watch how the team dynamics are different between a consultant standing there running it and uh, say the registrar or junior doctor was doing it. Uh, maybe on the team speaking up and saying, do you know this and trying to get the feedback is quite interesting. Uh, should we set him up to do something else? I don't think we've quite got time to run through a full sim, but what I'll do is, shall we uh, just put a few settings like the one? So, yeah. Yeah, we can do it, can we? Yeah, should we do a five minute one? Does somebody want to have a go? Nice. <laughs> Anybody want to have a little go? That's a new Okay. Yeah, yeah, do you want to do it? Do you want to be? No. Right, yeah, are we doing the scenario by break? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. I'm on the answer. Yeah, let me turn it into a call. Yep. In fact, we'll do it. We'll do it together. Yeah, yeah I'm in it. Yeah, I've already got a set in there, Jamie. Yeah. Um, well, I think, yeah. I think, I think it's going to Mark. I think Mark's now. Um, do you want to do the set up to begin? Yeah, do you want to set up to Yeah. Do you want to take us? This is it. Okay. No problem. All right. Right, let me get all of it, sir. So, so Mark has a habit of making the man from vomit. And it's been off two moments. All right. <laughs> right, Jane. Um, can you please a little slower for us? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's say we're upset for them. We managed to pop on to a simulation this morning. I've just given Jamie uh, and Becky the talk on this is how the money can work. So we are, uh, Okay, all right, so I'm going to start the scenario, okay. You've got um, 30 seconds, Jamie, but so just run right. through the ambulance guys so we can get through to the phone because you've had a lot of calls, and uh, that's the sheet. I've just called through a 79 year old chap. Right, Becky, um, yeah, so Rachel, yeah, yeah 79 year old male, um, okay. reduced responsiveness for the history of a fall, so that's yeah. what it says, and writing's awful. Um, OBS are uh, all right, really. Um, heart rate's okay at 76, respiratory rate's a little lower, 8, okay. uh, blood pressure 165 over 75. We've got SATs of 92% on air um, okay. and a GCS of 7 uh, with, a normal, oh, right. with a normal BM of 6.5 okay. um, and we've got 30 seconds to prepare. So in summary we've got an elderly, gen uh, elderly gentleman who's fallen and is now less responsive. Um, there looks like there's a, initially a B and a D issue. Um, okay. So when he gets here can you hook him up to some monitoring yeah. um, and I'll take a bit of a primary handover and then we'll yeah. from there. Okay. Cool. Hi there, so this is Ned, 79 year old man. Um, we've got him in from the community hospital, he's just had a fall. Um, he's been less than responsive since falling, so he's got some bruising on his face. And he's got a history of back injury. He's also doing dual UTI. Okay. His past medical history is like. Uh, Hi Ted, parties. my name's Becky, I'm one of the nurses. I'm just going to get Ethan to look at some of our monitoring if that's okay. Is he talking to you, Becky? Not so far, he's opening his yeah. eyes. Oh, hi, oh. Ted. Uh, is it okay for me to just put the monitors on? Just a blood pressure cuff yeah. on your arm and um, a fat, uh, little peg on your finger. <laughs> are you okay, Ted? Ted? you all right there? Ted? You all right? Talk to me, Ted. Ted, hello? Yeah. Oh, so he's still talking. That's good. So, A, I'm happy with. Who are you? <laughs> uh, my name's Jamie. I'm one of the doctors. Um, we'll just see it to B. So we have got bilateral air entry. I'll hook him up to the ECG monitor as well. Thank you, Beth. No, I don't have to. We've got SATs available. Okay, I have to worry about it. 
Okay, so I am on 15 litres. Okay, so we'll leave that on 15 litres. Um, so we've got a respiratory rate of... Oh. Okay, I'm going to feel... Is that right, Colin? Obviously, okay. to see. Have a little feel for a rating. We've got a rating on that one. Let's try his carotid. He has got a carotid pulse, so he's done. It's cool. You want to cycle blood pressure as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine, so we've got a gentleman with no pressing air issues. B is a bit of an issue, um, so he's hypoxic on air, and his respiratory rate is. Eight. Eight, so that's quite slow. Um, are you right, just have a quick look at his people? Yeah, right, absolutely. Look through these notes. Ted, can you just open your eyes for me? So I've got a history here of four, okay. he's on dihydrocodone. Ted! Ted! Uh, look at the uh, 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 moaning at me, that his pupils are really small. They do seem to be responding, but they're so tiny that... Um, I wonder if he's suffering from opiate toxicity. Shall we try some naloxone? Yeah. Um, can you report the drip mic please? Yeah. Have you got an IV line? Uh, not yet. Okay. Would you okay, like to do that? I'll do that. Can you get the naloxone out? I'll get the Anything else you want me to do? Well, you give that IM actually. Okay. Yeah, same dose. Yeah. Yes, please. I don't like needles. I'm sorry about that, Ted, but we're just a bit worried that you may have had too much medication and it's making you a little bit drowsy. Jamie's just putting a needle in your arm just so we can give you some medication. Touch that. Have you got that? Yeah, that's in it. In which case, I will give it to you to give. Yeah, I thought she was not going. <laughs> 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 so, cool. now after the naloxone, how are we doing? So, thank you, Ted. Ted, how are you doing? Still hypoxic. That's 400. Ted? Ted, can you talk to me? Sats are coming up. Don't remember. Say again, Ted. Good for you. Him a wit. Ah, hello. Yeah, you're just in hospital, Ted. I think you, you've had a little too much of your, your medication. Um, we're giving you some, some medicine and you seem a, a bit better. How are you feeling? Not quite right. Not so quite I'll just right. have a little look at his pupil. Um, <laughs> 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 you open your eyes again for me, Ted. Okay. The other side. Now I'm Becky, one of the nurses. So it's definitely better. improving the GCS. Yeah, that's still better. Small. I mean, we can count his respiratory rate for you. This is the worst headache I've ever had. Ah. Okay. And I'll stop there. Give these guys a clap. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Right, so let's. Uh, you can leave that one okay. all tidy up. Shall we, shall we just go in the room next door and uh, have a seat and, yeah. and talk about it? Okay, do it. Come with us as well. Okay. Right. I'll use that scenario now and we'll talk about the debrief in a, in a minute. Okay. Um, that was a very quick, simple scenario. And I'll give you the sheets actually, which we place that on. Um, this is how we sort of plan what we're going to do in each sort of teaching session. In the, in the department. What I don't tend to try and do is sort of work out a teaching session where you start off with, so we'll start with this, if this happens we'll do this, if this happens we'll do this, and then we'll do some real fancy stuff, pre-program it on the computer. I think some people still try and do that, but you always find the person doing the scenario will completely throw you, you have to make it up again, right? So you, you need to work with the person and one person watching the scenario, one person running the, the equipment, okay? Um, 
you're working in the sort of um, sim laboratory or, or setting, you can always hunt wire people up with sort of microphones and stuff and communicate between you. Um, certainly wouldn't advise you running one by yourself. No. You know, the, the whole purpose of this scenario, which we got to fairly quickly here, possibly because we wrote it, was <laughs> really what, what is the cause of this person being grazing in this? What we want to treat with people, get, do a full assessment, get the history and get them to sort of dig and think glucose, think the drugs, think because his kidney's gone off and that's causing to be like, okay. Any, any questions as well? Sorry? Yeah. Uh, Dodricodine. Sorry, it's Dodricodine. Codeine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Opiate, yeah. Yeah, we code it. So, which, which, believe me, I, I picked up a lot of patients, especially on that frailty unit where you know, you sort of go and see them morning around, they're going, no, come on. <laughs> Repeated dose of painkillers have, have accumulated overnight and makes them quite drowsy, which you feel a bit stupid uh, unless you get down to what's causing it. And you can, you know, this guy could be it, could be a duty eye, could be something like a it could be a head injury, you know, which just changes how people go through this. Just as you do, i from infection prevention here with probably a bit of a funny. Do you do the infection prevention? Yes. So, so when we run it, it's, 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 it's yeah, it's yeah. the full kit as you would, and we would expect uh, we would expect stuff to don PPE prior to the patient's arrival, yes. and yeah. everything exactly as you would. Um, when we when we we hold in the department, we give give a preamble, a spiel. Go and get kit where you want it. Go and get drugs from where you get them. Yeah. We've got stacks for all our emergency procedures. If you want one, you go and get it, and you open it. And you do everything in real time as you would. This was a, a little bit more artificial, but yeah, absolutely. And you, you can totally pick people up on, on the end. One of the learning points may be that you guys, you, you people here, are pretty much all crap, you know, and, and, and you need to do better. And that's, that's a valid learning point that the sim will pick out because you may find that people fall back into their reflective, <coughs> just doing it without gloves and all sorts. Yeah. I think doing it in situ, it's much more realistic. Um, because you are there using your own equipment, um, people do tend to do what they would normally do. So they will prepare as though it was a real patient and do things um, much more so kind of using, like I said, real equipment as much as possible. Um, obviously, here we're a bit well, we've ALS. Got, <laughs> we've we're kind of gone back to ALS answer. standard. Um, um, but that's one of the Kind of nice things about doing it in situ, it, it's very realistic. And um, we do what we tend to do is say things like drugs. Because one thing you might test out with this is you know, on your ward, you never do like nursing yeah, stuff okay. and doctors know whether the locks on it. Yeah, um, and that would test very much that. And what we do tend to say is go and get the drug that actually we use. We want you just to inject, say, right, but get the drug out, check it. Just draw so, yeah, so we yeah. would do the full sort of PPE and use stuff that. to bring the vial to the bedside, mm -hmm. and when the drug is at the patient's bed, then we'll give you a vial of saline. So it's all um, in as much real time as possible, um, and so we do try and test out real systems. We tested the massive hemorrhage protocol for real in the Royal um, a few months ago. Um, we ran a simulation of a, an upper GI bleed. And we worked with the transfusion medicine and we sent, I took Jamie's blood and sent it to the lab and activated the massive hemorrhage protocol. Now the lab didn't know, some of the kind of the, the bench top lab stuff didn't know it was a test um, until the name of the patient <laughs> flashed up and it was obvious. Um, but we ran that to the point where they got all the blood, blood products and we stopped the simulation when the blood products arrived within the department. So they ran it as a real test and they timed the lab stuff. We, we ran it to box two, so we went to three, four So, years to, you know, we yeah. use it as much to test the processes and the environment. And certainly when we first started, you learned, it learned so it much your system. about the um, kind of the system and, and the processes. You've got the transfusion staff for watching the simulation and getting more impatient. Where's the blood? Where's the blood? Than we were. And simple things like our FI2, who called the lab up, didn't mention the word. You know, code red or major transfusion protocol just asked for blood and that didn't tick. 
that didn't send the light splashing up from the back. So that was a very useful one for our learning as well as theirs. And, um, yeah, and, uh, that we did one with strokes on glycosin, yes. um, which is a good one as well, so you don't tell radiology. Mm. Yeah, um, I think that, that's, is that, did you write that out? Um, Julie might have done, yeah. Found, yeah. Found, found, yeah. Found, yeah. Okay. And it was really, it was really enlightening. <laughs> yeah. But that's the beauty of it. And, yeah. that, and you just, you just test your real system. Same for the just gone with patient. We've, we've yeah. done that one. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. The simplest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could all do it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the things that we find that work are ones like this, where you check people that have been through again through what you know, does your department work is also the other thing. And you, you you know, I think geriatrics very good if you can get somebody, you get some like David who tends to be around just using as a patient or, or yeah. But you know, you, you end life or end the resuscitation decision making, you can simulate that. You can put a 90 year old on the bed and then come in, come into the visit, look, this guy's from an nursing home, he's, he's got you know, end stage dementia, what are you doing? Um, and you know, you can send it around the table and see, see how people react. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I suppose a bit on the deep brief after you. My, I'm very much simulations excuse to start deep briefing people. Okay. <laughs> That's part of Has anybody here sort of deep briefed in a sort of simulation? I think the delirium one, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How did you find that? It was really good actually. Yeah. Um, we use the video capture as well so you can replay your clips. Um, but it, that, again, that was with a real patient, it wasn't with a. Oh, was with an actor actually, but um, not, not, with a, not with a mannequin. Mm. I think that just added a wee bit, it was a bit different. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. I think video equipment's quite useful. There's a lot of different video capture sort of systems, software, hardware, uh, some expensive and some not so, which, which you can use, but you do need to be fairly slick at it and get some of these to the right in it to utilise it. Uh, difficult and to use that. Did you go into a debrief with ideas about what you wanted to debrief them on? Yeah, so we did. So we did the so the debrief session ran. I think it was ten minutes, and then um, I I talked for three minutes on delirium. So I gave a kind of final three minute. This is these are the take home points, um, and that was quite useful. But it was Julie that was in charge of it, and she. Said this is how you're going to do it, and this is what we're going to do at the end. And she did that in all the time, except this one you have a three minute highlight at the end, stroke the same. No, it's going to if we find we're going to the debrief and um, we've got points that we've jotted down, but actually the candidates who have done the thing, they want to learn something different. That what they yeah. have attributed value to is not always yeah. what we have. Um, but I, I quite like your idea of a short burst of, of information that you want to carry across. Yeah. So, how would you open up, how would you open up that? Uh, yeah, okay. Show me back here. How, how was that? Yeah, I mean, seem to realise what was going on. Yeah, okay. Any, any, what, what, were, what did you think was going on there? What, what did you get to? Well, initially we had to, had to be quite broad, so we got an old, old boy who's, who's less responsive, and the difference on that's quite wide, mm. so mm. To, to stick with an open mind and, and, and make our assessment fairly complete. Uh, evident from the notes um, sort of that there was a background of deteriorating renal function and you know, on coding. So that sort of tweaked something. But, but equally, when he woke up, he talked about headache and a head injury. Yeah, so there's yeah. a few. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'd be a bit worried and perhaps wants to take some okay. yeah, that, That's how it's done. And the reason I'm doing that is. I want to see what he thought of it first because yeah, I thought that was pretty really good. I don't know what you thought of the way he dealt with that, yeah. But, but what you'll find when you start talking, it's very nice to open the opening and edit that feel or something like that from Tim because it will start up and you need to get rid of what people feel and the perceived problems in that scenario. They've just been in or otherwise to begin with. Um, and they may come up with what you think they did wrong or did well. Um, get rid of that first air to nines, go through that, talk about that. Yeah, I think it was he'd gone off with that, but yeah, it was actually quite crazy because you got a bang on the head as well, and that UCI you didn't get to. Yeah, it's that sort of thing. And then talk about the team interactions and stuff. So I, I tend to start with the open gamut. If you start off talking about, oh, that was dreadful, you didn't pick up, but you know, we've got this to begin with, 
that won't sort of a it will get their back up b it will get them worried and they're still thinking oh but i actually missed uh, listening at the face of their lungs or thinking about the c-spine or something so you need to get rid of and very much an obviously inquiry and um, sort of approach like a bit worried that patient wasn't breathing while you're searching around for the mark and <laughs> you should have yeah, well masked him because I'm worried he's going to have hypoxic brain damage you know do, do sort of do it like that and then get the rest of the team a lot of the time you don't need to say a lot but you do need to moderate it um, you can lose people occasionally completely in the scenarios and that's quite a challenging one to do really sometimes yeah we find that the challenge with the nursing staff mm. they they uh, they find it harder because I don't think it's as much as the medical staff do. Um, and it, it is wise if you an MDT team have somebody. We, we tend to drag mags all of our sisters in from the nursing clinic because that'll pick up stuff from the nursing clinic. I don't really. Oh, so if you do that normally, yeah, or well, you yeah. should have done that, then it will. And that's great on the PPE. For those of you who want a few more resources, I've put a link on there that's also tweeted out for you on Twitter. Um, if you follow that link, there are links to all the scenarios, or 20 of the scenarios that we run, some of the blogs that we run.